this is Chelsea with Fiber Enchantress and I am here to show you how to comb wool with Viking combs using both the English combing method as well as the two hand or Viking method. Now there will be some supplies that you will need for combing wool. First things you're going to need are two wool combs. These are Viking wool combs that I got from a comb maker named Indigo Hound. Um, they were about $100 to $150. A little expensive, but not too bad. It also came with this stand here. Um, I bought a pair of C-clamps, which are here, that I used to hold down that uh, wool comb clamp. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. The next thing you're going to need is a spray bottle. Uh, I live here in Colorado. It gets really dry and as you're combing, you'll create a lot of static electricity. This spray bottle will definitely help with the static and the, cl the fibers clinging to your hands and to your equipment. The next thing you're going to obviously need is some cleaned wool locks and our end result will look like this. All right, let's get started. All right, everyone, we're going to start today with the English combing method first. In order to do that, I need to take my Viking combs and make one into a hackle and one into a comb. How I do that is I actually use my comb clamp, which I have secured to my table using my C clamps. This goes into the clamp with the handle about halfway and gets tightened down. This will prevent the comb from coming out so that I'm able to process the fiber. Okay. To put the fiber onto the comb, we're first going to take a look at our wool locks. So this is pretty much the shape that it's in once it's been washed and has been removed from the sheep. You have your tip which is the outer portion of the fiber, as well as the cut end. We're going to load our comb from the cut end. So this, this end here will go here. And how I do that is I'm going to take my hand and I'm gonna hold the tip and I'm just gonna gently brush it onto these tines, like so. You want to be careful when you do this to make sure that you don't accidentally jab your hands. Ooh, that's a really nice one. Look at that. So I'm just going to put these onto my comb. I can even do it this way where I just kind of carefully just kind of jab it on, spear it on there. And and I'm going to put it on until it's about halfway up the tines. I'm noticing as I put this on that it, there is a, a wide variety of staple length, which is the length of uh, staple, which is the length of the fibers. Combs will actually organize your fibers by how long they are. Okay, so now that all the all those locks are on my combs, I'm going to actually grab the whole wad and actually lift it up a little bit from the base of the comb. That will allow the tines not to rub up against the wood part of the stationary comb. Okay, taking the comb in this hand, I'm gonna make sure to hold it tines away and you want them to be perpendicular from each other. You don't wanna brush with them parallel, you always want them to be perpendicular. So I'm going to take and just 
starting at the very tips, just gently brush those fibers like so. As you're doing this, you do want to just brush the tips. You don't want to try and like go through the whole meaty part of it because it'll be it'll it will be difficult to brush it through. So just take a little bit of the tips. Just like that, nice and clean. And you're noticing it's starting to get a little, a little bit of static here. To kind of calm that down, I'm gonna go ahead and just gently mist it with my spray bottle. You do not need a lot of water. You don't want this absolutely soaked. You'd spent a lot of time making sure that it was nice and dry to begin with. So let's not put all, let's not get it all wet again. So we're just gonna just gently mist it and that will ease up some of that static. Okay. So just keep brushing and get some stubborn fibers that will stick a little bit. After a couple of passes, you can kind of move a little further in. What I'm also doing is I'm kind of making a scooping motion. So I kind of grab the fibers and then scoop or pull away. And they're getting shorter and thinner and thinner and thinner. Now at this point, I'm starting to hear and see the tines of my of the comb in my hand start to clink against the stationary comb. At that point, you've pretty much combed all that there is to be combed. So you have this little kind of scrubby short bits. This you're going to go ahead and slide off the comb. These are short fibers that um are too short for these combs. They, they just won't go on. This gets tossed aside. It's not thrown away. You can still use it for other projects. So I set that aside. And now with all of my fibers on this comb, I'm going to put them back onto the stationary comb. And I do that by, again, holding the, the tines away from me and I'm perpendicular to the stationary comb. And I'm gonna brush down and pull away. Just like so. You can start to see all those fibers go from the, the comb in my hand to the comb, to the stationary comb. Oh, that's so pretty. I love doing this. It's always kind of a zen. We're starting to get back down to the shorter fibers again. You can hear the, the tines clink. You do want to be very careful when you get to this really short bit that you don't accidentally catch the tines with, with the other comb. Um, that, will bend, that will bend the tines and make it, uh, make it difficult to comb. All right, that is all the really short ends again. These are the ends that we're going to actually toss into our basket and slide them off and into the basket it goes. Okay. And this actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to lift these up again and if you look at the stationary comb, you can see there's a slight 
angle right here. Ah. See the angle right here? What has happened is the through combing, we have loaded it so that the shorter end, shorter fibers are here, all the way up to the longest fibers that are here, which is really nice. When you comb, the reason you want your fibers to be all in order by their length or their staple length is because when you go to spin, in order to get a very strong yarn, if you have uniform staple, you're able to create a very strong yarn. I plan on using this roving in order to spin yarn singles that are strong enough to go onto my loom so that I can weave with it. Having all of the fibers organized by the length of the staple will make that job a lot easier. It'll make it so that I can create a very smooth, even, consistent yarn that has even staple length and it'll be very organized and beautiful and will create a yarn that will be strong enough to withstand the rigor of my wheel of my loom okay so this has been combed we're now ready to move on to using our diz which is this ah. dizzes are Basically, it's made of a hard material and it has a hole in it. You can use a bead. I've seen them made out of horn, wood. I've made a diz out of a piece of cardboard. This is a really nice acrylic plastic one that I picked up at the Estes Park Wool Market one year. And it came with a wire threader, which is really nice to have. It makes it so much so easy to pull the fibers through the holes in order to make the roving. My diz also comes with three holes, and there's a small hole, medium size hole, and a large hole. And basically, all that does is it allows more fiber to go through. So if I want really thin lace weight pencil pencil roving, I use a little itty bitty one. If I want thick roving. I'm going to obviously use the big one. Today we're going to use the medium sized one. So I'm going to take my bead thread my threader and I'm going to slide it through the medium sized hole. Then I'm going to put my fingers in the medium sized hole, take a pinch of some fiber like so, and just pull it through like that. And then I'm going to pinch this pinch pinch the fuzz and give it a gentle tug and then slide that diz up closer to the comb and what's happening is i'm spreading out the wool fibers and then gathering the tips all together I'm not pushing it really far forward. If you really push it really forward, it's gonna be really difficult to pull out. At any point in this process, if you're having to really use a lot of muscle, really having to yank on it or pull on it really hard, you might wanna pause, back it off a little bit, and, it, and kind of let out some of that fiber. You might have too much fiber in there and then it becomes, until it becomes easier to pull. I'm just gonna kind of just walk this across the comb, pulling those fibers. And right now I'm I'm pulling pretty much the the mostly the long fibers 
and I'm able to kind of draft for a good good amount of time before it gets that way. The shorter the fibers get, the more I'll have to scooch this diz up close towards the, the fibers to get more ends through. And it just comes off like so. Goodness. I have this attached to a coffee table or to a TV tray that's not really all that heavy so it doesn't take a lot of effort to accidentally just kind of tug it and have the whole table come with. I typically do this on a different table however that table has another project on it and I don't really want to clean it off for it so I'm just gonna have to hold this cut this uh, TV tray down to make sure that it doesn't uh, come off All right now you see how I'm having to woof easy stay down see how I'm having to scooch this up more these are definitely the shorter bits And we're getting to the point where I'm pretty much done. Yeah, there we go. And that's the roving. So now what I do, I'm going to take it between three fingers and just kind of gently wind it into a cute little baby ball. Like that. Kind of tuck the end in so it doesn't get tangled and that is our finished product and that goes in the basket with the rest of the fuzzy bits that comes off and gets tossed into the waste paper basket and that is how you comb using the English setup Okay, so now we're going, I'm going to show you how to comb using the Viking method or the two-handed combing method. So I got my combs and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to load the comb. And just like with the English method before, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold it by the, hold the tips, hold the comb and just gently brush my locks onto my comb. Being careful not to catch your fingers. That's gonna hurt. It's not fun. Don't do it. I think every single time I've been careless with these combs and not paying attention to what I'm doing and I catch it, it always cuts to cuts it to, to the point where it bleeds and ugh, it's not fun. So I, when I comb, I try to just really pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to put one more on here. Trying to find really nice combs, nice locks here. I don't like that one. Yeah, this looks good. Grabbing the tip end. This lock is kind of interesting. It's difficult to tell which is the tip and which is the cut end. One way you can kind of tell is if you look at it really closely, I have found when I wash my fleece, the cut end will tend to mat a little more than the tip end. Let me see if you can see. So this is the tip end and you can see kind of how it's a little matted where this is the tip end and it's a little, well, it's still quite fuzzy. So that's kind of one way you can tell. 
I'm going to go ahead and grab that tip and go ahead and put it on my comb like so. Ta-da! Okay. Just like with the English method, you want to make sure that your, your tines are perpendicular from each other. And I find when you're just starting out doing the double two-handed method, it is always a good idea to keep these tines away from you. It is when, when you got both of these moving at the same time, it's easy to accidentally catch your clothing. These will make holes or to catch your skin, which will also make holes. So just like before, we're going to start with the tips. And I'm just going to brush the tips. When using the two-handed method, it is kind of nice because I'm able to use both hands at the same time. So it's not this one. I'm not holding this one still and just kind of brushing it through like that. I'm actually kind of using it to aid in putting the fibers onto the onto my left-handed comb. So this method is a lot more fluid. There's not really a comb that sits still. Both of them can move at the same time. Not only that, when it gets to the point, like see how there's more fiber on this side of the comb than this side of the comb, because I'm brushing it this way, I can actually switch it up where I hold this one vertical this one perpendicular and brush it on like so. When you get to the point where you're starting to hear those tines or feel those tines start to scrape against each other, that means that what's on left on your comb is just the short scrubby bits that we're going to peel off and toss away. I'm left-handed so I, I typically like to keep the empty comb in my left hand. Okay, so that was pass one. So now we're going to go again with pass two. And again, I'm just brushing I do find it, ta it takes practice to get the the fibers as evenly distributed onto your wool combs with the, this method than it is with the English method. It's very easier, it's easier to distribute the fibers um, on the English method because you're able to kind of see it go on. This is a little off, like you can, I can, I can tell by looking at this comb, like I have way more fiber on this end than I do on that end. And that just takes practice. I, I typically use these combs in the English method, so I'm a little more proficient that way. But if it's nice to have the versatility if I don't have a uh, table in which to attack in which to do it in English method, being able to comb with two hands is really nice. Got all the scrubby bits, take them off into the off, off to the side they go and now let's see I'm looking at that uh, I might give it one more pass we're gonna give it one more pass so there we go we're gonna do it this way Just brushing it through. You do need to be a little careful because it it this method because you have both arms, it is a little easy to kind of manhandle the fibers and be a little too rough. If you are really rough or you're you're adding additional force, you can damage the fibers and accidentally break them. 
which it would be sad and you don't want to do that if I wool nicely enough is fairly forgiving but you ideally want to keep that long staple switch it so we're doing this way again and I'm hearing those tines hit so I'm gonna go ahead ouch and peel that off all right okay so that looks really nice I'm gonna go ahead and kind of scooch it up now let's say you don't have a diz which can happen um you don't really necessarily need one you can actually uh, draft this off with your fingers so pretty much how that will work is i'm going to just go ahead and take my thumb and forefinger and give this a pinch and i'm just going to gently tug and tug it like this and just kind of make my own roving i find when using two-handed method it's actually really difficult to use a diz so this is kind of my go-to my go-to way of getting that fiber off of the combs you do want to draft it off the combs if you just slide it off and try to spin with it, you can. It's there's nothing there's nothing saying that you can't. But if you notice the back of this comb, see all these all this right here. This is where all of those really short fibers are trapped. And if you just take off the if you just take off the fiber and go to spin it all those little nubbly bits are going to end up in your finished yarn and if that is a look you're going for all for it but it, like again like for this project i don't want those in there so i'm going to make sure they don't go get in there by drafting it off by hand and we're at the point where that's where we're at so i'm going to go ahead and just like before wrap it around Got a little baby cake and into the basket it goes. Got the little fuzzies, they come off and into the other basket it goes. And that is how you comb with two hands. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video on how to use wool combs in the Viking and English method. Uh, I hope to do more of these videos on other fiber related topics. If you have an idea for a video, please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye.